Why do you argue? I told you I am older, so I am stronger. Ha! You think I'm afraid of you? For your information, Mr. Pozo, I weigh one hundred and fifty kilograms. Ha ha ha! You call that weight? I weigh four hundred and fifty kilograms. I think I'm many times heavier than you. How many times? Come on, Pozo. How many times are you heavier? I don't know how many times. I'm just heavier than you. Let's go and ask Dad. Welcome to the lesson on ratios. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to calculate the. Now that you know ratios. Dad, could you please help us? I and Hefty were comparing our heights and weights. Pozo says that he is many times taller and heavier than me. I think he is cheating, as usual. Dad, isn't there a way to find out how many times I am actually taller and heavier than her? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Time to introduce you to the world of ratios. Let me take a look at your heights and weights. Height and weight are measured in centimeters and kilograms, respectively. We can compare two quantities using subtraction. So, the difference between your heights is. One hundred and sixty centimeters. You're right, Hefty. And the difference between your weights is three hundred kilograms. However, we still don't know how many times Pozo is heavier and taller than you, Hefty. To calculate how many times the quantities of weights and heights are to each other. We would need to compare the quantities by division. Now, the method of comparison by division is called ratio, and is denoted by this sign. On dividing three hundred and twenty by one hundred and sixty, we get two upon one. So, the ratio of your heights is two is to one. In other words. Pozo is two times taller than Hefty. Aha! Now do you know my actual strength, Hefty? In the same way, to compare the weights, we divide four hundred and fifty by one hundred and fifty. We get three upon one. Got it, Dad. So the ratio of our weights is three is to one. Or more importantly, I am three times heavier than you are. Don't show off. I will catch up with you soon. <laughs> Sorry, Hefty. For once in his life, Pozo is not lying. Remember, children. Whenever we need to find how many times one quantity is to the other. We calculate their ratio. Now that you know ratios, let me ask you some questions. There are eight fishes, two turtles, and five frogs in our pond. Hefty. Tell me the ratio of the fishes to the frogs. Eight is to five. Bingo. Pozo. Tell me the ratio of the turtles to the fishes. There are two turtles and eight fishes. The ratio of the turtles to the fishes can be written as two upon eight. 
On simplification, we get 1 upon 4. So the ratio of the turtles to the fishes is 1 is to 4. Exactly. A tough one now. Hefty's turn. What is the ratio of the frogs to the total number of animals in the pond? Okay. There are five frogs in our pond, and the total number of animals, including fishes, turtles, and frogs, is 15. So the ratio of frogs to the total number of animals in the pond can be written as 5 upon 15. That is 1 upon 3. So the ratio will be 1 is to 3. Wonderful, Hefty! You're a smart monster girl. Look at my club, Dad. It's chipping from all sides. I can't even frighten a bird with it. Don't worry, son. We'll go to the city today to buy new clubs for you and me. Monster Day is around the corner, and you'll need a new club. Wow, Dad! The market has been decorated so well for Monster Day. There's the club shop. Hey, Dad! My club is 75 centimeters long, while your club is 2 meters long. So the ratio of the lengths of my club to your club will be 75 is to 2. Right? No, Pozo. You got it wrong. I'll explain. Look, the length of your club is in centimeters, while the length of my club is in meters. Centimeters and meters are different units of length. To calculate ratio, the two quantities must always be measured using the same unit. To make the units the same, we need to convert meters into centimeters. Now, one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So the length of my club will be 2 into 100, which is 200 centimeters. Therefore, the ratio of the length of my club to the length of your club will be 200 upon 75. On dividing the numerator and the denominator of the fraction by 25, we get... So the ratio of the length of your club to the length of my club is 8 is to 3. Bang on! Remember, Pozo, ratio 8 is to 3 is different from ratio 3 is to 8. Here's how I'll calculate the ratio of length of your club to the length of my club. The answer is 3 is to 8. Got you, Dad. Dad, could you please buy me a monster marble and a ball? Hefty would also like them. Come, let's go to the nearby shop and buy them. Here's your monster marble. It cost me 2 rupees and 50 paise. And here's your monster ball for 20 rupees. Bozo, can you now answer a question? The cost of the marble is 2 rupees and 50 paise, while the cost of your ball is 20 rupees. Tell me, what is the ratio of the cost of the ball to the cost of the marble? Since some money is in paise and some in rupees, I'll first convert the rupees into paise. 1 rupee is equal to 100 paise. To calculate the cost of a ball in paise, I will convert 20 rupees into paise, which is 2000 paise. To calculate the cost of a marble in paise, I will convert 2 rupees into paise, 
and add the remaining 50 paise to it. My answer is 250 paise. Very good. You have learned well. So, the ratio of the cost of the ball to the cost of the marble will be 2,000 paise upon 250 paise. which gives us 8 upon 1. So the ratio of the cost of the ball to the cost of the marble is 8 is to 1. Well done, son. I'm proud of you. Let's go home now. Huh? I've been coming to this restaurant since my college days. They play excellent music here. The lemonade is mind-blowing. Dad, I have one liter of lemonade and Pozo has two liters of lemonade. That's not fair. He has more than me again. The ratio of my lemonade to his lemonade is one is to two. You're right, Hefty. Your mom is having three liters of lemonade while I'm having six liters. Let me show you something interesting now. The ratio of your mom's lemonade to my lemonade is also one is to two. Wow! Dad, that's two ratios that look equal. You're right, Hefty. These ratios are called equivalent ratios. So, Dad, what are the equivalent ratios of 3 is to 4? Well, 3 is to 4 can also be written as a fraction 3 upon 4. Now, to find the equivalent ratios, just multiply the numerator and the denominator of the fraction with the same number. On multiplying the numerator and the denominator of the fraction with 2 and then with 3, we get the answers 6 upon 8 and 9 upon 12, respectively. So, the equivalent ratios of 3 is to 4 are 6 is to 8 and 9 is to 12. Dad, how can you be so sure that these are equivalent ratios? Don't believe me? Let's check. On converting the ratios into fractions and simplifying, we get 3 upon 4 as the answer. Dad, 24 is to 32 will also result in the ratio 3 is to 4, won't it? Clever girl! Take a look at these ratios. On writing these ratios as fractions and simplifying, we get 3 upon 4 or 3 is to 4 as the ratio. So 15 is to 20, 21 is to 28, and 33 is to 44 are equivalent ratios of 3 is to 4. So to get equivalent ratios, Convert the ratio into a fraction, and then multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Hey, Dad, I heard the hooter. The play is about to begin. Let's go. Congratulations. You have successfully completed this lesson. In this lesson, you have learned to calculate the ratio of given quantities and the equivalent ratios of a given ratio.